Thank you. Thank you for coming. My name is Steve Batish. I'm a technical fellow in the Windows and Devices organization. And uh, we are changing the way people use computers through Copilot Plus PC. A uh, little bit about what interaction technology is. It's enabling two-way flow of information through an, through an interface uh, between the computer and the person. And that could be transduced mechanically, electrically, or algorithmically. It's crazy to think it wasn't really that long ago that this was the interaction technology for computers. It was a punch card. This piece of card represents 80 characters or really one line of code. And a stack of them was a program. It's kind of crazy. This was not long ago, like we're talking about like in the 70s and the 60s. And to actually compile your program was quite an ordeal. You have to write it, you have to take it to the punch, <laughs> to the punch card puncher. Uh, they had to coalesce it, bring it to the computer, get the printout. You know, finally, at the end of the steps, you realize that you made one syntax error and the thing didn't compile. That was how we used computers not too long ago. What's interesting, if you look at all the different computing form factors in our time, they all had this pattern. This pattern was when you had a step function increase of compute ability, allowed us to write software that changed how we can interact with the computer, for the most part, abstracting the functionality of the PC, or the, of the, of the processor itself, and that enabled us to build new types of computers. And you see this pattern repeated over and over again, all the way from mechanical computing, the vacuum tube, to the microprocessor, to when even GPUs came, uh, to finally GUI and the mobile and now cloud. And today, the big thing that's happened with the step function and compute is the neural processing unit. So you see this pattern repeated over and over again. With NPUs, this is a really massive leap in compute availability at the edge. And the reason is, is neural processing units are really specific for the computation behind neural networks. They're basically tensor accelerators. If you think of CPUs generally as, as uh, you know, great for scalars, GPUs great for vectors, for the most part, NPUs are purpose-built to handle tensors all the way from the entire silicon architecture to the software stack is all about managing this data type. And it gives us a tremendous amount of efficiency as a result of it. Here's an example of comparing cloud GPUs in terms of total tops, but the efficiency of tops per watt, trillions of operations per second, so thinking that miles per gallon and then top speed. The things that are happening inside of Copilot Plus PC is absolutely extraordinary. This is a log scale graph, so you can actually see in the Snapdragon X series, Elite, a jump in, in performance, but it's also a jump in performance and efficiency, and that's really remarkable, and that's gonna allow us to do a whole bunch of things. Here's a workload my team did. Uh, so this is an NPU running the same workload on the GPU and the CPU. And you can see how fast it is, but it's not just fast, it's very, very efficient. If you compare it to, a, to, to the amount of processing power required to do that speed on a Core i7, let's say, you would need 20 Core i7s. That would cost a lot of money, and also, that would take a lot of power. Or even on a GPU, it would take, you know, a couple hundred watts, and also a lot of money. But a neural processing unit integrated into the SOC, it's fractions of a dollar, and, and uh, fractions, way fractions, not a dollar, but fractions of the, of the cost of the, uh, of, of the CPU, and under four watts is what you see in the Copilot Plus PCs. And that's really good, because the thing we know in neural networks and large language models is the greater the model, the greater the capacity it has to essentially work across these different domains. Smaller models have less capacity, larger models have more capacity. And when you have, more capa when you have a larger model, you have a lot of compute you essentially have to handle. And, 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 and you can kind of see what's interesting has happened in the AI kind of field is that a certain size you get these kind of emergent operations happening. All of a sudden the model leaps in its ability to do pretty magical things. And we kind of call that kind of the sparks of intelligence. 
And right now, we like it around 2 billion parameters. The cool thing that's happened with our devices, especially Copilot Plus PC, is that we have kind of crossed that threshold. So now our devices can run these types of models locally on the device to do amazing things, um, and that's what's really cool. And that allows us to do a whole bunch of neat things with interaction technology. You know, the, the, mouse, and, the mouse and point and click has been the paradigm for a long time for us and how we use computers. But with AI, we're gonna go from being programmatic to piloted. We're gonna go being from exact to being fuzzy. We're gonna be from explicit to implicit. We're gonna go from commanding to asking. And that's gonna change how people use computers. This amount of compute allows us to do the low latency transform, these neural networks built into the operating system in a performant manner so we can do better privacy and work offline. And it's really the underpinnings behind our banner feature called Recall. And the way we built Recall was having these models run consistently and constantly in the background to detect your region, do OCR, do image encoding, text encoding, and a natural parser, natural language parser, all running in the background without burning up your battery life, a tremendous amount of compute so that you can help remember what you've seen, the stuff you've seen, and go back. So this is really kind of the underpinnings that enabled recall to happen. And it allows us to create on the fly a vector database that allows you to very quickly and easily search the things that are on your machine, just like the things you were able to search on the internet. It's in fact the same sort of database technology that we use in the cloud that powers Bing is running here locally on your Copilot PC device. It's pretty incredible. And this allows us the combination of the step function and compute with the new interaction technology that you saw yesterday with recall, co-create, and a whole bunch more coming. You, you allow us to build a new category of PC. This is really the next PC, and everyone is all in and making it happen. It's super exciting. Uh, you know, it's got a certain minimum bar to actually run all these experiences. Uh, which is great for our customers. And it can do some pretty amazing athletic things. So this is a demo we've never shown before. This is the first time I'm showing this demo. We're running all the 40 models that we're talking about simultaneously on the device. So on the left, you see image creator running, generating images on the fly, all on the device. We started Silica, which is a small language model that approaches GPT 3.5 abilities. And you can see the NPU really kind of screaming there on the top right hand corner in the resource task manager. All the while, this is happening. In fact, I have studio effects running in the background. So the things like denoiser, blur, background segmentation is actually literally happening in the background. The thing I want you to pay attention to, you can't see it, it's just on the bottom. There's no workload on the GPU. And what does this mean? By the end of this demo, while I'm running this entire workload, I can run a game. And that's pretty awesome. That's the type of power that sits in these Copilot Plus PCs. This is a laptop, for crying out loud, doing this workload. It's pretty incredible. That's awesome. Thank you. This wouldn't be a developer talk without some developer slides. So this is my developer slide. So uh, what's really neat is these are the things, as a developer, you can access on the device. We have a WinApp SDK where you can actually use Phi Silica on the device, a small language model integrating your application. It's super cool. You have OCR that runs super efficiently and fast on the device with multiple languages. You have the ability to use live translation in your applications as well as writing into the vector index that you have so that you can enrich it even more. Um, then there's a whole bunch of really neat Windows Core Audio APIs for beamforming, sound localization, noise suppression, et cetera. It's really a high quality audio pipeline built into all of these Copilot PC devices to really help person to person and person to machine communication. And finally, we have studio effects that you can use and integrate uh, into your application and experiences such as background segmentation, teleprompter, and auto framing. That's the call to action use these experiences, buy these devices, and make magic happen. Thank you so much.